So thank you, Hima. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, very quick overview of, of Todd. Uh, basically, I will talk about Todd, what bots we provide, and what uh, you as a user of Todd uh, can use and how you can benefit uh, from it. Uh, my name is Fridolin, and I'm one of the Todd uh, developers. So uh, the main idea behind Project Todd is basically to create uh, some system that will help uh, uh, Python developers uh, to create environment uh, which will be a better place uh, to develop applications, uh, but also to develop secure applications and applications that are uh, not uh, prone to errors. So developers can really focus on developing applications rather than fixing bugs. As you already know, Project Todd is uh, part of AICOE. And uh, the, uh, the service that we are offering is available uh, internally to uh, all of you, but also externally. Uh, if you want to uh, uh, visit our documentation or browse or what we offer, you can go to totstation.ninja. That is basically our homepage uh, where you can find all the relevant info and all the links uh, that will guide you to uh, the relevant parts. Uh, if you do not find something, uh, feel free uh, to uh, open issues on, on GitHub or directly reach out to us uh, on Google Chat. So, as stated, our mission is to make Python as a programming language uh, a better place uh, to code in. And as um, trends show, uh, Python is uh, becoming more and more uh, popular programming language. It's very simple, it's very intuitive, you can uh, directly write your programs, and it's very popular in uh, data science and machine learning communities. If you take a look at uh, all these uh, tools, uh, or machine learning libraries, uh, they provide uh, interface uh, to Python, and uh, this interface is very smooth, easy, easy to use, and all these heavy computations are done then under the hood, uh, implemented in ARC, C++, or other, uh, probably a lower language, uh, lower level languages, and uh, we. Uh, see uh, growing popularity of uh, Python uh, language out there. So it's definitely good to have this uh, Swiss army knife in your equipment. Okay, so uh, if we develop some applications, uh, we write a source code, uh, we import uh, some libraries and write the business logic of, of the application. We usually do not stick just uh, with uh, standard libraries that are offered by uh, by applications uh, or by uh, Python as a programming language, but we rather install also libraries. So on this page, we see TensorFlow, Flask that are used together. Uh, so a user or the developer installs TensorFlow, Flask, and develops the application. Uh, if we uh, take a look at it, it's not just the source code that is running that uh, uh, the developer uh, himself or herself uh, wrote, but it's all these machineries uh, behind Flask or TensorFlow. And these libraries have other libraries uh, as dependencies, so uh, they create a stack of, of uh, dependencies that need to be present on your system in order to uh, run the application. Uh, Libraries can use native dependencies that are offered by operating system. They rely on some Python interpreter version, possibly some uh, uh, kernel modules that need to be present in uh, kernel space, besides uh, uh, user space or libraries. And then uh, the operating system that provides the whole environment needs to run on some hardware. So hardware, uh, again, provides uh, quite large possibilities how uh, you can run your application and also uh, features when it comes to uh, 
uh, what is offered to the application itself. So if you have a GPU, uh, your application can benefit from it. But to use uh, the GPU, uh, you need to have a proper uh, uh, kernel modules, uh, then user space libraries, and uh, all these things set up properly. So if we take a look at it, it's a, a large stack of all the things that can go wrong. And uh, this is something where uh, Todd uh, comes handy. Uh, so basically, we want to offer uh, a service uh, that will make sure that all these uh, layers in your application and in your environment fit together. And you, as a developer, really focus on developing the application. And you do not care, you do not need to care about all, all the underlying pieces, how to configure libraries, how to match correct uh, dependencies uh, and their versions, and stuff like that. So uh, one of the main things uh, we do is uh, basically provide information about which libraries uh, users should use. Uh, we take a look at uh, libraries that are available in open source world. We analyze them and uh, we extract information. So we extract information such as, uh, does the given library uh, install correctly? If it installs correctly, does it start? Uh, if so, uh, uh, are there any bugs? or runtime errors uh, that can possibly occur. And also uh, runtime characteristics, like how the given library behaves uh, in the environment that is provided. And uh, if there are some features or some uh, capabilities that hardware provides, then uh, we take a look at also uh, performance of these libraries and uh, match uh, the setup that you have uh, with a uh, library setup and uh, so that you can benefit uh, with uh, intensive uh, computations. So uh, we take a look at uh, libraries and their versions. We extract information out of them, we analyze them, and then uh, we advise uh, on uh, which libraries uh, uh, developers should use. So based on the aggregated knowledge that we have, uh, we recommend a specific set of libraries together with a setup that needs to be uh, met on, in, on the specific uh, runtime environment that your application is running. So you can see Todd in overall as some kind of brain that knows how to uh, how uh, which libraries should be installed, uh, how they should be installed uh, in order to meet your uh, 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 or in order to meet requirements uh, that are present inside your runtime en environment. We take a look at information how the runtime environment looks like, so software and hardware present inside that uh, runtime environment. But when uh, users ask ask Todd for an advice. Uh, they also provide information uh, such as uh, what's the intention with the application. Should the application be deployed as, uh, uh, or is the application some model that is served? And in that case, uh, we recommend uh, libraries uh, that are very optimized to uh, model serving. And uh, we do not uh, take into account other aspects or we do not uh, take them as uh, seriously as in other uh, intentions, such as if the application is deployed to production. In uh, production environments, you probably uh, want uh, your software secure. So in that case, we are recommending more secure uh, software uh, than uh, when training uh, your model inside some uh, uh, environment that is not exposed to outside world. So uh, the main uh, thing that we do is uh, advising software that should be used and uh, how uh, that should be configured. Uh, one of the components uh, that uh, does advising or uh, the, the component that computes these advices uh, uh, is called advisor and uh, it's basically 
resolver that knows how to resolve software, so it fits uh, this criteria. Uh, the mechanism uh, behind uh, this resolver is based on uh, reinforcement learning, uh, and uh, it takes into account characteristics of your hardware, the intention with the application, but also uh, we do uh, static source code analysis on, on the client side. So if you are training uh, some neural networks, we know which layers you use and we can provide uh, better, uh, better recommendations uh, for running your uh, application. If you want to use Todd, uh, you can uh, do so. We provide a library that is called Tamos, and uh, we are uh, compliant with Python uh, standards. So every, everything that you do with Tamos uh, is basically compliant with uh, pip. Uh, that is the installation tool used uh, to install packages in Python environment, or it's compliant with uh, pipenv, that is also a tool uh, uh, maintained by the Python Packaging Association. And uh, these tools uh, manage requirements files uh, that are consumed by Todd. So if you if you use software that uh, is installed using uh, pipenv or pip, it smoothly uh, integrates with uh, Tamos, uh, with Todd. If you would like to use Todd, uh, we provide a command line interface that is one of the integration points uh, for Todd. So in order to use Todd, uh, the only thing you need to do is uh, install it by using pip install Tamos. Then Tamos uh, needs to be configure your environment. So the next thing you do is the Motus config and it will gen generate configuration file for you and place it inside uh, your application. Uh, this configuration uh, states basically uh, how your environment looks like, uh, what uh, operating system are you using, what Python interpreter uh, you are using, uh, but also other uh, things such as uh, what CUDA version is available if you use uh, GPUs and uh, possibly others. Once you finish Tamos config procedure, you can ask Todd for an advice uh, that's uh, done using Tamos advice. Uh, this command uh, sends a request to Todd and to, and Todd computes uh, recommendations. Uh, uh, this is all done asynchronously. So if you do Tamos advice, uh, the request is computed on uh, on our site. You can continue uh, with your work. And once uh, once the advice is compu computed, then Tamos picks uh, results and stores them into your project uh, directory. So uh, you can benefit from Todd's uh, recommendations. What Tamos advice uh, uh, gets for you from the recommendation engine is uh, information about direct, depend uh, direct dependencies. So uh, if you uh, use a Flask and TensorFlow as, uh, as stated before, uh, it manages uh, files that uh, that capture your direct dependencies, uh, but also uh, stores information about um, which dependencies should be installed, like listing of all the dependencies. So besides Flask, TensorFlow, and specific versions, also the transitive dependencies of uh, these dependencies. And optionally, it can also uh, store information about uh, configuration that needs to be uh, present uh, in your runtime environment. Uh, this is something you usually do not care, but if you are using uh, uh, OpenShift uh, S2I build process, uh, this build process automatically uh, takes this information into account. The log of uh, Thomas advice shows you uh, something we call justifications, and this is basically a listing of information uh, that uh, uh, show you why uh, the recommendation engine computed uh, the given uh, recommendation. Uh, so, as stated, uh, Tamos is one of the integration points uh, you can use. Uh, 
So if you are developing your applications and you want to contact uh, Todd directly from uh, your computer, you can do so using this uh, command line interface. The other option how to use Todd is OpenShift source to image build process. Uh, we provide base images that can be found uh, in this Git repository that is called S2i Todd. And they are uh, prepared uh, to running to run your applications inside your cluster. So once you develop uh, an application, uh, these OpenShift source to image uh, container images can automatically contact Todd and uh, benefit from recommendations that Todd computed. Uh, these are advices uh, during the build process. And uh, you can see in, in the logs, uh, basically the same thing as uh, if you would uh, call Todd from command line. So this justification and uh, uh, information which dependencies are installed into your environment. If you are uh, running this build process in AICO ECI, that is the CI that was uh, presented by Hashart. Uh, we automatically obtain uh, build logs. So if there's uh, something wrong, uh, Todd itself, the recommendation engine, can learn from, from these uh, observations. Uh, these container images are uh, fully compatible with, uh, with Vanilla. Python S2i uh, container images as produced by uh, Python maintenance team. Uh, the only thing uh, is basically contacting uh, Todd and uh, having that advice feature. Uh, if you would like to uh, switch back to Python S2i container images, you can do so. Uh, you can uh, provide an enable micro uh, variable that basically uh, uses the same procedure as, uh, as uh, in our S2i container images, except uh, Todd is not contacted. And uh, this is not recommended uh, to do. Another integration point, uh, how you can consume Todd and how you can benefit from Todd are Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, that's something uh, that uh, Francesco uh, presented. And I think Anand also included uh, this feature in uh, his presentation. So uh, very shortly, uh, if you are developing your applications using Jupyter Notebooks and you would like to install your dependencies, do not uh, use uh, this type of installation that directly inserts uh, dependencies into uh, or state uh, dependencies into your uh, Jupyter Notebook. Uh, the reason behind that is uh, that uh, you don't know over time which TensorFlow version was used if you state uh, the installation like this. The same for Boto3, the same for Matplotlib, and uh, also for the transitive dependencies that are installed uh, uh, using this way. This makes Jupyter Notebooks not reproducible. And uh, if you get back to uh, your Jupyter Notebook in one month or two months, three months, uh, you will end up with different dependencies uh, that are uh, installed. And uh, this will make uh, debugging nightmare, uh, especially uh, with new releases and uh, uh, backwards incompatible changes that can occur in libraries. So uh, please use uh, JupyterLab extension. Uh, you can find information in JupyterLab extension uh, or, uh, repository in Todd Station organization. Uh, the extension automatically contacts uh, Todd uh, to obtain information about uh, libraries that should be installed and automatically injects uh, them to notebooks metadata. So if you uh, get back to the notebook in three months. Uh, there will be information about dependencies uh, stated, and uh, you can save uh, some time uh, with debugging the application. And you are ever you are sure that the reproducibility is uh, taken into account uh, using this way. Uh, 
if you want to uh, have more information on these, uh, feel free to uh, check managing Python dependencies with Jupyter Lab extension. That is a blog post uh, published by Francesco about uh, Jupyter notebooks and uh, this extension also uh, why it is good to uh, manage dependencies this way. Uh, here is a screenshot. So, uh, Jupyter Lab extension also provides you a UI where you can state your dependencies. Uh, just a note: uh, if something goes wrong, uh, the Jupyter Lab extension uh, goes. Uh, if something goes wrong on the site, uh, Jupyter Lab extension fallbacks to standard uh, installation procedure, but still captures information about dependencies in your notebook, so you can. Uh, be sure it's reproducible over time. Uh, if you spot any issues in uh, in application dependencies, uh, we are happy uh, if you report uh, them to us. Uh, we provide uh, information. We, pro we keep this information or keep this knowledge. Uh, uh, so, if other uh, people inside the team, but also uh, outside uh, Red Hat. Uh, uh, encounter uh, such issue uh, will not be limited to uh, debugging uh, the issue again and uh, finding what's the root cause, but really uh, have that focus on application development. So uh, we introduce uh, this feature that is called prescriptions. And as the name suggests, uh, they are some recipes how to heal applications and applications application dependencies. Uh, we maintain a YAML file uh, that states known issues uh, that were found or spotted during uh, application assembling or application uh, running. And uh, if you spot any issue, feel free to report, to, uh, report it to us. And the recommendation in Gene, uh, the resolver that is resolving uh, application dependencies, takes uh, these prescriptions into account. So each time a user requests to, uh, to get application dependencies, we uh, take uh, what's written in these prescriptions into account and uh, save uh, time uh, to developers. Uh, so, uh, if you provide us this knowledge, you basically feedback uh, what uh, issues you had to, to the recommendation engine, and the recommendation engine improves uh, that uh, way. You can find prescriptions in the prescriptions repository in Tot Station organization. So feel free to uh, report uh, these issues. And if you are interested in writing prescriptions, uh, also feel free to write these prescriptions. The repo uh, can guide you to uh, documentation, how to write prescriptions. And we believe it's an easy mechanism. So. Uh, feel free to even write these prescriptions. But even if you do not write them, feel free to report uh, issues because uh, they are uh, valuable to us uh, when it comes to recommendations that uh, the uh, recommendation engine computes. And uh, the next uh, thing that we provide are bots. These bots are helping applications with application uh, development. Uh, one of such bots is called Sacheta. Uh, Sacheta tries to reduce mundane work and uh, help you to focus really on delivering solutions. So these mundane work like automatic uh, updates, automatic releases uh, uh, are managed by uh, Sacheta. Uh, you can find Sacheta in, uh, on GitHub. Uh, in store, it's called Kebehet. Uh, if you browse our documentation, it will stay. It states uh, how to install uh, Sacheta properly into your repository. If you have troubles, feel free to reach out to us, and we will help you uh, with uh, so, uh, with the setup. Here is an example of such issues. So uh, Sacheta automatically manages uh, dependencies. There are automatic updates. Uh, if you open an issue, uh, state you want a new minor release or new patch release of your application, Sacheta takes care of it, generates change log for you, automatically classifies features, bug fixes, and uh, the uh, release is done. 
Uh, this release is done by AICOECI pipeline. Uh, that's uh, the pipeline that uh, Hashart uh, presented earlier. Uh, if you're interested in Project Tot, you can find us uh, on totstation.ninja. This is our homepage. Uh, this is how it looks like. Uh, we have a YouTube channel, so if you are interested in features that we are delivering, feel free to subscribe. Uh, we post uh, updates, uh, information from our Scrum meetings and demos of features that we deliver. So feel free to subscribe to be updated. Uh, we also have a Twitter handle. Uh, we update uh, our users about features uh, here as well, but also some interesting news that uh, you can uh, find interesting. Uh, if you want to get started with uh, Todd, feel free to click on that Get Started button that will navigate you uh, to some crossroad page. If you would like to get involved, uh, feel free to click on that Get Involved button. Uh, you can find us on uh, Google Chat, uh, where we will promptly respond to your requests. Uh, here are useful references, so I've already mentioned the home page. Uh, Totstation is our GitHub organization, Twitter, and YouTube channel. Uh, this way, I would like to thank you. Are there any, ch any questions? I don't see any questions, but thank you, Frido, once again for presenting today. Um, if nobody has any questions, uh, we can stop recording, but feel free to reach out to Frido as well on chat. And um, like he mentioned, there's a YouTube channel, so we recommend you guys to also take a look at that as well. And um, I will be sharing the slide deck later on um, along with the recording of the session as well. So you, get, um, you should be able to have access to all of them. Thank you. And I think we have one last session um, by Francesco in a few minutes. So I will stop recording this one and we can go ahead and start off there. Thanks again, Frido. Thank you.